we got the Bible, right? That's one. Okay, you're reading the Bible. Cool. But then we start telling you, you got to change. Then there's a, there's a, seems to be a little bit of a, hold on, hold on now. Only God can judge me. That's what we say. But that's a Tupac verse. That's not biblical. You understand? So what that winds up doing is creating pride in our own mind. So we use the pride to say, you know what, this is how I'm going to live. You know, ain't no can't nobody tell me how to, how to live my life, right? You could be older than me, and I can tell you, brother, you in the midst of sin, you got to change. Brother, you ain't lived long enough to be able to tell me how to live. You understand? That's how our people think. But God says you we can't be like that. We got to humble ourselves to what this says, because this is what's going to make us. Come on. Well, most high Christ bless. Ha! Order, order, nation in order, my house in order. Who the prophets on the corner? What's that about? They say the Bible just for me, I gotta check it out. You scoffers ain't ready for me, I'm finna bring it out. My house is in order, my people, I can teach them now. Who the prophets on the corner? What's that about? They say the Bible just for me, I gotta check it out. You scoffers ain't ready for me, I'm finna bring it out. My house is in order, my people, I can teach them now. He leading captivity, shall go in captivity. So it says, it is the Sabbath day, we're not supposed to do any kind of work. It's the last day of the week. It's the day we got to chill. You got the day off on the Sabbath. Oh, let me tell you something. That is that is a gem for the brothers that's up here. We we literally, we have to beg our, our job sometimes to get this day off. Because it's God's day, especially when we tell them this is the Sabbath day. We need the day off. But you guys had the luxury, Corey, <laughs> of not having to work today. Right? God says that's the day to rest. Let me show you something. Come on. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. So even if you were filthy rich and you had animals, you had servants, they're not supposed to work on this day, right? It don't matter. It don't matter. Even if you have sons, KJ. Ain't supposed to work on the day, although, you know, your job is to eat, you're supposed to not, today is the day where you rest, okay? Come on. Verse 11, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. Now, this is the key, Corey. This is the key to the Sabbath day. Because remember, we read that he will go to his place until we acknowledge our offense. Until we find out what we did wrong, the Most High is going to leave us to our own will. Right? right? Come on. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So the Most High God says, you know what? I worked all week long, had a hard week of creating the heavens and the earth and the stars. I'm going to rest on the seventh day. I'm going to chill this day. The officer brought out to you what, what it means to be holy. It's to separate. So this day is separate from all the other days of the week. This day is the day to chill. This day is the day to be with family. We celebrate Thanksgiving. You celebrate Thanksgiving? Don't celebrate. How about Christmas? No? Okay. How about y'all? Y'all celebrate Thanksgiving? Oh, now that you know the meaning. But before that, all right, all right. All right, you do. But you celebrate Thanksgiving, and Thanksgiving means what? You get around the family, eat once a year, right? Once a year. But guess what? Give me that in uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 10. But you understand that the Sabbath day is the day that we're supposed to come together? It's Thanksgiving. You, you actually are giving Thanksgiving to God on the Sabbath day. That's right. On the day that the Lord created for you to hollow and for you to worship him. That's that day. Every week. Every week, not once a year. You understand? Come on. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves 
together. So you you notice how we have different churches all over the place, right? Some churches on Saturday, some churches on Sunday, some churches is like two in the afternoon, some nine in the morning, right? But God says we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Right. What day are we supposed to assemble ourselves together? On the Sabbath day. You understand that? Hey, what's your name, bro? No, Zarias. Zarias. Oh, Darius. Okay, brother Darius. We're out here teaching our people, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, that we are the Israelites according to the Bible. That's not that's not just something we're throwing out there, but according to the Bible, we can show you the proof that the curses that us going into slavery, did that happen to your ancestors? Alright? That's written in the Bible. Read that in Hosea chapter 5, verse 15, one more time. I'll, I'll go, I'll go ahead, ask your question. How do you defend yourself against the Caucasians? That's a great question. I'm going to show you how to do that. Give me that one more time, Hosea. Come on. Hosea chapter 5, verse 15. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense. So again, the Mosai says, I'm going to leave you to the will of the Caucasians until you acknowledge your, your offense. What was our offense? Breaking the Sabbath day. Today. Today is the Sabbath day we're supposed to keep holy. And I was reading to you that on a Sabbath day, that's when we're supposed to come together and worship the Most High. If we're together worshiping the Most High, there's no way He can touch us. You understand that? That's how we are defended against the Caucasians. If we're keeping God's commandments. Okay? Let me show you another one. Um, finish that out. And seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me early. So when we go through with the worst, think about it like this. We have off some of our family members, they either get put in jail or they want to get put to death, right? And the first thing that comes to mind is, oh God, why? Why, Lord, why? That's what the scripture is telling you. In our affliction, when we're having it the worst and we're going through it the hardest, when the so-called white man is on us, heavy, either at work or out here on the streets, brutalizing us or whatever the case may be, the first thing we say is, oh God, why? God, why me? Father, help me. God, help me. But God says, as long as you continue to offend me by breaking my commandments, I can't fight for you. I can't fight for you. Give me Proverbs chapter uh, 16. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 7. When a man's ways... Listen up, Darius. Listen up. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. So how do you please God? It's the question. If a man's ways pleases the Lord, then he'll make even his enemies to be at peace with him. Bring it up! So the question should be, okay, then how, we, how do we please God? If God would defend us, if we please him, what do we do to please God? Huh? No, absolutely not. We're going to show you. <laughs> go ahead, oh, go ahead, sis. Oh, we go. We gonna deal with all of that, sis. Come. Uh huh. Cause the Bible says so. That's right. Bring it out. Sis says that ain't good enough. That's not good enough. <laughs> sis like, mm, I don't know. That ain't good enough. Okay. Okay. Well, did you get a flyer? We got our school uh, address and a phone number for the school on that flyer. All right. So that's and that's another way. Uh, give me. Um, in uh, Sarat. Give me that Sarat. 37. Know what I want? No. We have no affiliation with no other church group. Because we, like I said, Islam is a religion. Being an Israelite, that's your heritage. That's not like, that's not like, uh, I can wake up today and say, I'm a Baptist. And then go to sleep, wake up the next morning. You know what? I don't feel like being a Baptist today. I'm a Catholic. Right. You know what? I don't, you know what? I don't want to be a Catholic today. I'm going to be a Muslim. Right. That's what religion is. That's man-made. You can change your mind on that any day. You can't change your ancestry. You can't change your bloodline. You can move to China today. You're still going to be a nigga in China. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? But God says you're not a nigga. God says you're an Israelite. You're above all people on the face of the earth. That's right. That's what God says. So you could be anywhere in the world and still be God's people. Right. 
But you have to understand what it is to please God to show the world that you are a child of God. Yes, Let me read this real quick. Let me because this answers your question too about um, uh, right. How do you defend? Come on. Sirach chapter thirty-seven verse twelve. But be continually with a godly man whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. So you got to understand who are the people that are keeping God's commandments. I can tell you how. They're going to be the ones proclaiming to the world that you must keep God's commandments or die. Without no shame, without no fear, to come out here and tell our people who will rather smoke weed, go to the club, and do everything wrong instead of keeping God's commandments, and even in the face of death, say, you know what? You still got to change, whether you like it or not, whether you want to hear it or not. You got to keep God's commandments because you are God's chosen people. You understand, God? Okay, okay. We're we going we gonna, to we gonna get through all of that. Check this out. Go ahead. Sirach chapter 37 verse 12. But be continually with a godly man whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord whose mind is according to thy mind. And will sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry. Because what you gotta understand, give me that, give me Matthew 4. Uh, is it Matthew 4? 43? I'm sorry, uh, perfect. Right? Because what you gotta understand is what we're teaching you right now, the reason why people don't necessarily understand it as, uh, we've got the Bible, right? That's one. Okay, they're reading the Bible. Cool. But then we start telling you, you gotta change. Then there's a, there's a, seems to be a little bit of a, hold on, hold on now. Only God can judge me. That's what we say. But that's a Tupac verse. That's not biblical. Right. You understand? Right. So what that winds up doing is creating pride in our own mind. So we use the pride to say, you know what, this is how I'm going to live. You know, ain't no, can't nobody tell me how to, how to live my life. Right? You could be older than me, and I can tell you, brother, you in the midst of sin, you got to change. Brother, you ain't lived long enough to be able to tell me how to live. You understand? That's how our people think. But God says you we can't be like that. We got to humble ourselves to what this says because this is what's going to make us. Come on. Matthew chapter 5 verse 48. Be ye therefore perfect even as your father which is in heaven is perfect. And that's what people don't understand. We will say what is perfect because we've never seen it. But I'm telling you right now, what you're seeing before you, that's perfection. That's right. And yes, of course, do we, do we fall? Do we slip up? Hell yeah, because we're striving for perfection. The only time that we actually get to that being perfect is when Christ returns to save our people, to save us. You know what? I did everything I could to please God. That's all that matters to me. That's perfection. That's having a perfect mind. So what makes you perfect? That's the question. Bring it up. What makes you perfect? It's the same thing that pleases God. Give me that. Psalms chapter 19 verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. You know what it means to convert, Tyrone? What does it mean convert? Nope. Convert means submit. No. Brother, what's your name? What's your name? Jackie. Jackie? Jackie. Oh, Jay, I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. What is convert? What's the word convert mean, Jay? Come over. Convert, okay. Change, right? The change. You convert U.S. dollars to pesos. You convert pesos to U.S. dollars. That's you change the money over, right? That's what the Bible's saying. Read it again. Psalms chapter 19, verse 7. Uh -huh. The law of the Lord is perfect uh -huh. converting the soul so if you want to know how to change right in your life to become perfect what do you got to do you got to do that what's perfect you got to do what's perfect what's perfect the law of the lord is perfect converting the soul so if you want to know how to be perfect you got to see somebody else that's doing it that's how we learn as a people we are visual learners. We have to be able to look and see, okay, listen, the Bible says that this happened to us in slavery. We read in Deuteronomy, it, re it talks about the auction blocks that we are on, the yokes of iron on our necks. We can see it, and then we hear it out of the Bible, and it's like, you know what, that makes sense. So now even when we say, as brothers and as sisters also, if we want to be perfect, we have to be keeping God's commandments. Well, we are taught nobody can keep all those commandments. That's not true. 
That's a lie. Because you're looking at brothers who keep and strive to keep all of God's commandments. That's right. Go ahead. What's the commandment? The commandment. I'll show you the commandment. The com one commandment that you can look on all the brothers and see that we're all in unison keeping. Give me that. Numbers chapter 15 and verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. So that when you look around at the brothers, right? and you look at their garments, you should see something that is very noticeable on every one of their garments. That you could immediately pinpoint to and say, okay, that makes sense, Is what is that? Because that's usually what the people say, when we go to work, we got them on, right? We go to the supermarket, we got them on. When we live every day, we got them on, because that's a commandment of God that we keep every day. We strive right, to keep right. every single day. Right. No matter if we got uniforms that we have to wear, we got the uniform on top, and underneath, we got something with the fringes on it. Because that's a commandment of God. Because we understand that doing this will make us perfect. This is how we please God. This is how we keep the enemy away from us. You understand what I'm saying? Because then that's how you are protected. Because now everybody else can walk around and see you with your pants hanging, sagging up below your belt, you know, below your butt, and you're looking crazy. You know what I mean? Then they'll be like, oh, that's just another nigga. You just another nigga. But then when they see you with your pants pulled up, right. with your fringes on, you know what I'm saying? And they look at you and be like, something's different about this one right here. No. No. Something's a little di what, something's a little off. But the only reason why it's off, because they're seeing perfection. That's, right. That's what it is. They see perfection, but they just don't understand it. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Seven, right? There's about, no, there's more than seven. There are over 600 commandments. Yeah, but think about it like this, right? In the state of Texas, how many laws do the, does the state of Texas carry? Millions. <laughs> Millions, right? It's a big state, man. It took us about five, it took me about five hours to get from El Paso or something like that to Houston. It's a big state, so I'm sure they got a lot of laws, right? Can you keep all the laws? No. What do you mean no? How many people have you killed today? Two. <laughs> you killed two people today? <laughs> I'm saying though, can you can you not kill somebody? So that's the law. Yes, that's against, that's against all the laws that we know of in America and around the world are based off the commandments that you read in the Bible. That's, that's right. right. All of them. Everything that you can think of. Okay, well, how about stealing? Yes, that's against God's commandments. Right. So if you can keep God's commandments, it should be no problem for you to keep the laws of the land. That's yes. right. Now, the laws of the land also stipulates that you can marry of the same sex. But God says that's against his commandments. Right. So then you say, okay, that's something I'm not going to do. Because that's what God says. That's how you keep yourself away from the enemy. That's right. Are we warriors or... I'm gonna show you that. Absolutely, bro. Go. All right, brother. You got a flyer? Yeah, I got to go. All right, brother. Tyrone. Right, right. Hey, listen. Call the number. Call the school. Don't let. It. Before you go, I got to read this to you. Leviticus right, come 21. On, come on, Leviticus 21. You got to understand. I want you to understand this too. This guy, the bias. I'm sorry. And brother Jay, when the Bible talks about uh, being perfect, perfection also comes with training, right? You got to be taught how to be perfect. Right. And the Bible gives you the instructions. And sometimes you might already be living in a wrong way. The Bible gives the correction. All right? So we're going to show you how to correct some of the things that we're doing wrong. Come on. Leviticus chapter 21 and verse 5. Right. Oh, they shall not make baldness upon their heads. Uh -huh. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. So when the Bible says not to shave your head bald, you know what it means. You see Michael Jordan and all that. If you're going bald, this brother's going bald here. If you're going bald, that's fine. But if you take a razor to your head and you start shaving it clean, that's against God's commandments. Right. Right? So now the same thing with your beard. If you are shaving your beard, you understand? That's breaking God's commandment. Bring it up. Yes. What is it that easy to do? Is it easy to let your beard grow, huh, uh, Jay? Is it easy to let your beard grow or to keep fighting every week to find more razors to cut your beard? Or having the barber, the barber paying a barber to cut your beard. It's easier to let it grow, right? If you can grow it. If I can't, I can't grow a beard, unfortunately. But at the same time, I'm not shaving it. But you hit, you hit a law. You gotta stop shaving your beard, bro. Right, right. You gotta shave it every week. Hey, you gotta, you gotta stop. If you wanna please God. Right. 
There it is. If you want to please God. Now give me First uh, Corinthians. You finished with that? Read. Nor make any cuttings in their flesh. So when the cuttings of your flesh go into tattoos, right? Like my brother right here got tattoos on. I don't know if y'all got tattoos, right? If, you're, if you got tattoos, the Bible says that's not something that us as Israelites are supposed to do. Right. It's right. That's it. It's, it's, it's easy as that. The stopping and turning away from the things that we used to do. Right. All right? Give me, yeah. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Uh -huh. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. So this is what Paul is telling the Israelites. He's telling them, listen, if you want to follow me, I follow Christ. So if you follow me, you're following Christ. All right? And that's what we do. We follow Christ, the black Messiah. Yes, that's right. Understand? Because Christ is not a white man, as they've told us. Come on. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you. So the ordinances are those commandments that we read about, right? That keeps us in line with the Most High. Keep pleasing Him, right? Come on. Verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ, uh -huh. and the head of the woman is the man, mm -hmm. and the head of and the head of Christ is God. So your question earlier was, are we warriors? Absolutely. What the Bible is trying to do is rebuild the nation of Israel, right. starting with the army of God. Right. Bring it up. You understand? So as an army, there's order. Right? You got generals, you got sergeants, you know what I'm saying? And, and so on all the way down to the project, right? To the, 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 the lowest part of the soldier, right? So now even the Bible says in the household, there's order. Read that one more time. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Yeah. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Uh -huh. And the head of the woman is the man. Uh -huh. and, the, and the head of Christ is God. So every man has a head, a leader, that's Christ. The head of the woman is that man right. whose head, whose leader is Christ. Christ's leader is the Father, the one true God. Right. You understand? There's no trinity where there's three in one, that that's not biblical. Right. That's also a lie. You understand? Bring it out. So the Bible says that there's God, his son, man, the woman, the children, and that's it. That's the order. That's right. You understand? That, that can't be changed. But here in America, it up. it's 50-50. Right, right. But that's not biblical. That's so, right. Go ahead. Uh, hold, hold on. Let me, let me finish with the... the all right? Give me that. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. Every man praying or prophesying. So the reason why I'm going here is to show you as a warrior, even as a, a soldier of God, you have to have order. In order to be a good soldier, you must have discipline. Right. Right. You understand? So all of what we're teaching, according to the commandments, and what you read in the New Testament, Old Testament, wherever, are disciplines or strategies, a law, a principle, that you can keep every single day to become a better soldier. You understand? Come on. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, uh -huh. dishonoring his head. Uh -huh. So now, again, who is the head of the man? Who's the head of the man? Uh -huh. What did we just oh, read? No? No, 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 no. Let's read it again in verse 3. Oh, the head of the man. Uh -huh. it's, Christ, right? it's Christ, right? Yeah. So now, read that verse 4 one more time. First, first Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered. Having his head covered, come on. Dishonor it. His head. So when you're praying, Bruh. you're asking the Most High to hear your prayers, right? Asking Him to make your life better in some way, make you better in some way. Right. Your head can't be covered, right. right? Prophesying now. What is prophesying? I don't know. You don't know. All right, we're gonna show you with the Bible. Come on. So what we're showing you is that the Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we're the Israelites. Jay, if you got questions, fire them off. All right. What you got? Talk about this. This right here? Okay, we're gonna get we're gonna get you in there. Revelations chapter 19, verse 10. Bring so it this on. is prophesying. We're gonna explain prophesying right now. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. So here it is. Here's the point. 
worship God. Uh -huh. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So now when you read throughout the whole Bible, it's actually the testimony of Christ. Right. You understand? So when you read throughout the Bible, the testimony of Christ, that is prophesying. So even if I'm reading the Bible to you, that's prophesying. You sit and you read it and you meditate and study it, that's prophesying. Right. You understand? So now, go back to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. You understand yeah. what the prophesying is? Kind of a little bit. Okay. Take me okay, it's all right. Yeah. When, like I said, when you read about the, when you read throughout the Bible, all of the Bible leads up to Christ. Oh, like prophesying, mean like fulfilling, like, fulfilling, like right, like what we're doing right now is actually fulfilling prophecy. Uh, right. By reading the Bible to you out here on the street, yeah. teaching you you're an Israelite according to the Bible when you thought you were something else. Right. You understand? Come on. First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse four. Uh -huh. Every man. Praying or prophesying, uh -huh. having his head covered, uh -huh. dishonoreth his head. So now when you're hearing prophecy and you have your head covered, what does it say you're doing? Read that last part. Last part of the precept. Having his head covered, uh -huh. dishonoreth his head. So when you have your head covered, hearing the word, you're, you're doing what? Dishonor. Dishonoring who? Right. Exactly. So, hearing that, right? How do you show Christ that you won't dishonor him? I can't take my head off. Yeah. A hundred percent. I see what you're saying. Okay, okay. Yeah, I didn't know that. All praise to the most high. Now let me show you what that what you just did. I'm gonna show you what that is. Give me Acts 3 and 19. <laughs> Give me Acts 3 and 19. I'm gonna show you what you just did. Come on. Because this goes also back into your question about being a warrior. It also goes back to your question about how do you please God? What is it that we got to do to please God, right? right? Or what are the laws we got to do? Come on. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Right Repent ye therefore uh -huh. and be converted. So there you go, that word again. Being converted. Changing. So repentance means changing. Right. Because you thought you could wear, you could just rock with your hoodie on and you hear the Bible coming out. But the Bible says otherwise. So now what do you do? You do what the Bible says. Right. You don't just do what we say, you do what the Bible says. That's, right. That's repentance. Right. You understand? Now they will see the true men of God. We are not black men, we are Israelites. Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.